Greetings all. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the inerrancy of Scripture. What do I mean by inerrancy of Scripture? I mean just what I just what I say. The uh, Bible is 100% truth and fact. And uh, now, why is this important? Uh, I should be. I should clarify. Uh, the King James version of the Bible is inerrant fact. Um, there could be others, other translations. I don't know. Um, I know that there's 60 different books, and they're all copywritten by people that uh, are out there to, to make a buck. Um, the NIV is, I think, Rupert Murdoch, who is like a humanist Luciferian guy, um, and he owns the copyright to the NIV. So he's not necessarily trying to bring, bring people to God. And, and this is the case for a great deal of these other, many other uh, Bible books out there, uh, as people want the copyright. Now, the King James Version is pure because the people that, that did the translation for this book believed it was the Word of God. So they treated it accordingly. Now, the other reason the King James Bible is the only one you can trust is because it cannot be changed. Ever. Uh, the patent, the authorized King James Version is patented from, by the King of England, which there is no King of England. So, the only one that could change it is a king, and the king doesn't exist. Um, so that one's going to be the same. No one can mess with it. Uh, there's King James and then the authorized King James. I haven't seen much of a difference between them. But this is what we're talking about when we're talking about inerrancy of Scripture. We're not bringing that NIV crap. We're not bringing the American New Standard Revised Super Duper New Age phenomenon thing. We're not, we're not bringing that. We're going to bring the King James. Now, to what I was saying earlier of why this is important. Um, if you're going to call yourself a Christian and say you believe in God and, you know, you believe, you, you read the Bible or whatever, why would you unless the Bible was perfect? It doesn't make any sense. Um, and this is why people have such a good argument against Christians that just believe and they don't even know why they believe. They were just raised in it, and they've made absolutely zero personal discovery for themselves as to why they should even be believing it. Um, they're easy to tear apart. They got nothing because they don't believe the Bible is inerrant. They don't. They don't believe that. They don't believe Noah and the Ark. That's that's ridiculous in their mind. Um, so if you don't have a basis for your beliefs, you really can't justify them. I don't know. If I didn't believe the Bible, I couldn't call myself a Christian. Um, if I didn't believe every single word. Because if there's even one error in the book, how do you know you can trust the entire book? Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that logical? That if you found one error in the Bible, then obviously it's not the Word of God. We know this isn't correct. Therefore, we don't know what is true and what isn't. Now, I make the statement that the King James Bible is 100% true. Um, and people can try to attack that all they want to. Let me tell you, it's been tried and tested and proven. And there isn't any book that is held up to the kind of scrutiny that the King James Bible has. None. It's never been proven false. Ever. Uh, so go for it. Many have tried and they've all walked away converted. Because the truth is, when you read the truth, you become convinced of it. Uh, that's just how it is. The more you research the Bible, that's why it's important to read the Bible, by, by the way, the more that you understand it and read it, the more you understand that it is the Word of God. Um, plain and simple. Uh, the other reason for the King James Bible is that it's, a, it's an error-correcting, error-checking book. There is a Bible code. It is not Dan Brown's Bible code, but there is codes all throughout the Bible. Um, and Jesus even tells you about uh, one of them. One of them is that uh, witnesses, you need two or three witnesses anytime you say anything. And if there's people speaking different languages, you need to have interpreters. Um, this is all throughout the Bible. You've got the accounts of Genesis are in three different places in the Bible, uh, as an example. You've got uh, Christ rising is in three different places in the Bible, as well as the Old Testament, not all the foreshadowing there, and all of the different biblical references are all in many different places in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. Now, the only way that you can have the same message throughout um, 
what, 60 something books that are actually in the Bible uh, by 40 different authors. The only way you can retain the same message is if it was inspired by God. I know I've written stuff. Okay. It's not easy. It's hard enough to take a hundred thousand words um, for a, a fiction story and make it make sense. And it's a fiction story, right? It's, it's really hard to do that. Make it actually readable and uh, have a plot and all this stuff. That's very difficult. Now, you're going to take something and you're going to write it over a thousand years and have 40 different people write it. Could you imagine if people did that today, what kind of a mess it would be? It has to be divinely inspired. Just given the fact that the words make sense. It only makes sense that if you're going to call yourself a Christian, you're going to have a basis for doing it and actually know what you're talking about. Uh, and you're going to be able, when you are a Christian, you're going to understand and be able to spot the phonies, the things out there masquerading as Christianity that aren't Christianity. It just comes with the territory when you read the book and understand the words and see what's going on. That's what the Reformation was all about. Um, you know, when they finally people were actually able to read the book for themselves, they figured out, hey, wait a minute. Well, this isn't what's going on in this here book. What are, you, what are you talking about there, Pope? This isn't what the book says. You know, and it's... That's where you got to come from. And, you know, people will say, how do you know it's the right book? Uh, you got all these other books. You know, you got the uh, the Koran and whatever the Buddha book is and, and all these other ones. And you say, if you just read them, the difference is, is very apparent. The words speak for themselves. I mean, I think I got about, uh, oh, 50 pages through the Quran, and I'm like, this is silliness. How could anybody believe this garbage? All all's Muhammad does is run around saying, God is great, God's this, God is that. Every other word is God. Uh, that That isn't even readable. And don't even get me started on uh, what uh, Muhammad thinks you should go do to be a good uh, Muslim and all this stuff. I mean, it, that is not the God of the Bible. And mu and the whole Muslim faith says, oh, yeah, well, we believe in, you know, most of the Old Testament, some of it. Whatever Muhammad says is good. Well, that's the same thing as the Pope. You know, Muhammad is the was the Pope of, of uh, you know, like a, it's a different version of Catholicism. And don't, it, Muhammad himself was married to a Catholic nun, okay? So, you can watch Walter Vaith's uh, Total Onslaught where he talks about where actually the Muslim faith comes from. So y you look into these different religions and when you understand the Bible, you understand that it's all the same thing. You've got Christianity, God of the Bible, and then everything else which is the same thing. It's all pagan witchcraft. Everything else. It, that's what it all comes down to. Um, there isn't anything that's even remotely close to what the God of the Bible is. The God of the Bible is the only one who actually loves you and created you for a purpose. Um, that's, that's it. Uh, and it, and it actually covers origins and makes prophecies and the whole, the whole bit. And it's shown to be true. In fact, guess what? When you find a problem in the Quran, guess what happens? Well, whatever Muhammad said later in the book is, is more accurate than what he said at the beginning of the book. Or they change it and say, well, he didn't really mean that. And that's, that's what the Catholics do. Anytime a political shift changes and some of their members are starting to walk away from the Catholic faith, then they say, well, you know, evolution's okay. We, we'll, we'll buy into evolution. And guess what? When they prove evolution wrong, um, the Pope is going to be all for uh, aliens seeding the planet with DNA. Uh, that's where the Pope is going to go because that's the only place you can go once you accept evolution and not God the Creator. That's it. That's all you got. Um, you know, if, if if you believe in something, like you believe in the New Age thing, or you believe in, uh, if you're a Muslim or whatever, and you believe in that religion that isn't a naturalist religion, if you find out your religion is wrong, you can come to a different religion and come to the truth over here in, in King James Bible land. You can do that. Uh, if you're going to accept uh, evolution, you're stuck with it. You're completely stuck with it. If it if it turns out not to be true, which I can prove that it isn't, but if it, if it shows that it's not true in your mind, you're stuck. You, you ain't got anywhere else to go. You've got God, and you've got the universe came from nothing. Take your pick. Um, 
the only two that I'm aware of that are say God did it are Christianity and uh, Muslimism, um, Catholicism, sort of. But you know, and everybody else is essentially saying that the uh, you know, world's always been here, and uh, you know we're just kind of going through evolution and being reincarnated. And that's what Hinduism and Buddhism and all that is all about. So that's that's your that's your choice. It happened by itself or God did it. And there is ample evidence in everything that you see that God did it. So it, 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 it's up to the person then to discover who, who God is for them um, and really put some research in it so people can speak with some authority when they say their XYZ religion and why they believe it. And back to why this uh, inerrancy is such an important thing. Um, if you don't believe it, and Jesus said it was all true. He said it's all profitable for doctrine. Um, and you're a Christian. That means you believe in Christ. That would be Jesus. And he said it's all true. And you're going to say that the flood didn't happen. or he, you're, you're calling Jesus a liar. Right? Isn't that blasphemy or something to that effect? That's, that's my rationality for saying that the whole thing is true. Because if it wasn't true, he wouldn't have said that, right? And I certainly think that God is powerful enough to preserve his word uh, uncorrupted in some shape or form. Um, and I think that would be the King James Bible. Now, and I will admit in co uh, modern man, common day societies that this causes a lot of problems because everyone says there's all this science that... Uh, doesn't jive with what's going on in that there Bible. And this is where, you know, really being a student of religion uh, helps out. If you don't want to take it on faith that, you know, those people are all just wrong, you can go research it. And like in the case of evolution, that thing is blown out of the water so many ways from Sunday, you just, 15 minutes, oh, okay, couldn't happen. You know, mathematical probabilities of uh, 1 times 10 to the forty power of 40,000. Uh, you know, the... The mathematical probabilities alone are ridiculous. Um, it couldn't have happened. So, but there are there are some things that are that are in there that are a little bit hard to swallow. Uh, the Bible suggests that the Earth is six thousand years old. Now, it doesn't state it as outright. The Bible, uh, the Earth is X Y Z number of years old. People reach that number by uh, adding up the genealogies, and they would seem to indicate six thousand years. I've, I don't have any problems with it. Uh, my personal stance on it is it's really not of that big of a deal. I don't care how old the earth is. It doesn't really matter to me. I'll accept 6,000 years. That's fine. That's, that's what the Bible seems to indicate. There isn't anyone that can prove that it isn't 6,000 years old. And even if they did, you don't know. I, didn't, I don't see that there is iron core, hard clad fact what age the earth is. I don't think that it could be much older than 6,000 years, and certainly not millions of years. Now, the scientific evidence shows that it, it could, really couldn't be millions of years old. Um, but, you know, whatever. There's things like that that you'll have to run into and you'll have to reconcile as to what you think about it. And it's, it's difficult in some regards. There's um, some question of uh, where are places in the universe and things that we think you know about cosmology. And, uh, um, you know, I mean... Well, uh, the Earth has to be, this is my favorite, the Earth has got to be billions of years old because we see starlight and stars are billions of light years away, right? Well, if you research something like that, you come to find out that they don't know how far the stars are. They really don't. They have no clue. And if you research your Bible a little bit, you find out that God uh, created everything right at Earth and stretched out the heavens and stretched everything out. So there's no problem. None. But only with the knowledge of the Bible, can you know that and understand what they're talking about? Um, yeah, I mean, if you just say, yeah, I'm a Christian and you don't have any basis to back that up on, you're not a Christian. That's my opinion of it, is you're not a Christian. You just kind of say you are. You're, you're a Christian in name only, I guess, to stay with the pack. I, I don't know. Um, that That goes for these stars and things like that that said oh yeah i converted from christianity to atheism it's no you didn't you are always an atheist nobody converts a true christian does not convert to atheism it doesn't happen uh the people that say that were never the religion that they said they were to begin with 
they just went through the motions and were like, yeah, mom's dragging me to church on Sunday again. Um, yeah. And then, of course, you might find a lot of Catholics that I'll, I'll buy into that any day because their, their religion doesn't make any sense. Not at all. Not from a Bible perspective. But uh, you'll never find a Baptist decide that he's becoming an atheist. He never was a Baptist to begin with. Um, period. It, it doesn't happen. So what it all boils down to from a logic and a biblical perspective, well, a logic perspective more of Christianity, if, if your God tells you that the book is true and fact, you, then you should believe the book if you want to believe your God. Otherwise, you're calling your God a liar. I don't know. I don't think uh, if I created something and it was calling me names, I don't think I'd like that. Um, and that's what it comes down to, is if you believe you're a created being and everything is created by a creator, well, then you might have some responsibilities and you might actually, you may have created you for a reason, right? And the the book is there so you know what the reason is. That's that's what it is. Doesn't that make sense? Why would they? Why would you put lies in the book if that's supposed to be your operation manual for what you're supposed to be doing here? Uh, it it's only makes sense. Yeah, and there's things that are hard to reconcile in the book. Sure, that's where you need to research. You know, if there's some contradiction somewhere, you really need to look at it and go, well, what's what's going on here? And I can guarantee you the Bible is going to walk away just fine. There isn't going to be any problems with it. And you're going to find out, science especially. Now, 150 years ago, everyone believed the Bible as absolute pure literal fact. And it wasn't until we get into this evolution stuff that people started really straying away. Um, heliocentricity, trend, heliocentricity did as well. Um, because as soon as you poke one hole in the Bible, as I said then you can't believe any of it. And I agree with that. And I'm very confident in the fact no one's going to be able to poke any holes in it. Um, so if you're going to call yourself a Christian and your God told you that everything in the book is the truth, then it might do well to actually read the book. Because you know what? On this world, I've come to find out that the only thing that is true is the Bible. Everything has got some kind of an agenda, some kind of manipulative aspect to it someone's opinion, or it's just false. It, you, you, people don't know what the heck is going on anymore. Um, everything is, is just craziness. And guess what? That was written in the Bible uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, it, what we're going through today is exactly what's in there. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, with that, I think I've spent enough time on this. So with that, I guess I'm going to be out of here.